We found out pretty early on because Alex was a twin and we had what they call twin to twin transfusion syndrome. It's fairly common, you know, that one will survive and one will not. So, and then, so Alex had to be born in the 30th week of pregnancy. And, um, and then she was in the uh, NICU uh, unit and, you know, they started running tests and, and found some brain tissue damage. Well, I went into early labor, so um, my water broke, I guess it was six months. And I stayed in the hospital for a month. They put me on bed rest. And at that point, we knew there was something wrong with her, but we didn't know what. And uh, she was just real low muscle tone, would just lay there, wouldn't cry, and stuff like that. And so they started running tests on her. He had stopped, um, he just stopped talking. He had about five or six words that he used. And um, he just stopped using them. And then, so we went to the doctor and was like, okay, he's not talking, he's not speaking, you know, He's not doing anything else. He's not gaining any more words. It was frustrating because I couldn't understand what he, his needs, what he wanted, and and uh, we were just, you know, button heads. And I just, I said, I can't. I, I, he's not speaking. And uh, and he would take my hand and go to the refrigerator and try to show me that he wanted juice or milk. And um, and it was just, it was hard. And so finally, I I just I told uh, Jamie I. I think he's, I think he's autistic. We actually didn't learn cerebral palsy until she was much older. We were about at Children's Hospital. About six months old, and the neurologist mm -hmm. said, I'll put a label on it for you. So she got diagnosed with global developmental delays, um, low muscle tone, sensory issues, um, and then eventually when she was four, she got diagnosed with ADHD, pretty severe, um, and then some learning disabilities. It's, it was always really frustrating to us because it, it, we felt a little bit isolated because we never had a place to go for, uh, for resources or to fit in. You know, you, uh, we saw these families with autism, these fat families with Down syndrome, and we weren't sure where we fit in, in, in how we treat her, how we um, help her. Then we started searching for um, ways to get him um, Involved in group involved activities. Involved in group with, with, other, with other children, uh, with other autistic children, other mm -hmm. s children with special needs that were, was having the same problem. You know, we, when we were little, we both played sports. I played softball and he played soccer. So we weren't really necessarily looking for him. We just thought that was one more thing that we weren't going to be able to do. And um, now, of course, with Community Connections and with all the programs I have, you know, he can, he can do stuff. Our way in was through dance, through mm -hmm. uh, Julie Mayberry, you know, and she started that I Can Dance group. Jeannie was Aubrey's physical therapist, and so when Aubrey was three, she was like, I really think you should put Aubrey in soccer, because we were needing things to get her more mobile, um, burn, burn calories for her, and so she said, I think this would be really fun for her to go and do, and so that's how we started it. It's it's the highlight of her week. I mean, whenever there is a you know a soccer game or a cheerleading function to go to, I mean that's all she talks about. Yeah, she's got to get her outfit out. She's got to get ready. Dance was huge for her. Um, she was able to go in with all the girls. So she's she's a girly girl, um, but she very much so. Yes, very much so. Very much a girly girl, but she doesn't have. She, it's very difficult for her to make friends. It's very difficult for her to make friends in school. Um, so it's a challenge. And so she got into this group of girls that were similar to her in different ways, very accepting. And so she could be a girly girl. And she could dance. And she could wear her tutu. So when he got on stage with that camera and he didn't say anything, you know, I guess it it just, he was bit after that and was like, I wanna say something next time, you know, I wanna do, I wanna act. So it just really got him to come out, start coming out of his shell. And, yeah. And uh, using his creativity, because he's very creative. I think the ACTS program gave him the confidence to be that way. Mm -hmm. To be himself, unapologetic, Confident. And then when she came off the stage and she had this huge grin on her face, you know, like, look what I did. Absolutely. Yeah. And she said, look at all these people standing up, clapping for me, you know. She felt like a star. You know, it, I think it uplifts um, the people watching to see that these kids can dance or can do things they would immediately assume they couldn't. 
Um, and those fun memories are kind of part of growing up with, with, with our family, getting to see some of those neat things happen. Now she can be with kids just like her. So it's not just, hey, tell your unusual story. It's, hey, I'm part of a dance group. All these girls are just like me. The best way that I can describe it is for that 45 minutes to an hour every week, I'm a normal mom. I can sit on the sidelines and watch my son play. I didn't think I would be able to.